how I started working with Jim Cameron was a very bizarre story. I was uh, a student at USC Film School uh, from uh, 1982 to 1986. And in about 1984, in October, around the time Terminator came out, James Cameron brought the film to one of the film classes, uh, Cinema 466, that uh, every week they would screen a uh, upcoming film, an upcoming film or a recently released film, and they would bring in filmmakers or people who had worked on the film to do a question and answer session after screening the movie. And Jim came down and, and brought Terminator and kind of blew everybody away because here's this little, you know, quote unquote, B action movie that really had a great story and, and everything. And what really struck me about it, apart from enjoying the movie, was that in, in the question and answer session at the end of the film, uh, Jim really kind of talked about, you know, guerrilla filmmaking. And, oh, and on this scene we had three uh, little Mexican boys for the ending because the, the, one of them wouldn't act, and so we used a different one for the, for the reverses, and we used the original one for the over-the-shoulders, and then we dubbed it with even a, a third kid's voice. And all of those kind of things that you kind of hear about and do in film school all the time, but you think, oh, when you get out in the real world, they don't do that anymore. And you find out that they do, and so maybe the film uh, making world professionally isn't really that different from the student filmmaking world. So it was kind of a kind of a really interesting thing. And I thought to myself at the time, you know, I never spoke to him. I thought to myself at the time, boy, if there's, you know, one filmmaker I should put on my list is James Cameron, as people may, maybe I should think about, you know, trying to work for after I graduated. So two years later, I've just graduated from film school and I had been calling since graduation to Pacific Western Productions, which is where he and Galen Hurd basically had, uh, had offices at Fox at the time. And every month it was, oh, do you have any, you know, do you have any intern positions or any you know, production assistant positions? And since they weren't working on any films at the moment, they said, you know, call back next month, um, which is surprising. You don't find that happening too much even today. Um, and so, you know, Nothing really came of that. Over the summer, Aliens came out. I saw it twice on opening night. And uh, after it came out of the second time with uh, my friend Ed Marsh, who has become a, quite a video documentarian producer on his, uh, in his own right, um, he said, you like mechanical stuff and, and all the special effects stuff, and you seem to be really particularly interested in the power loader. Um, I dare you, as a gentleman's bet, to build a model of it for my Halloween party, just just a model or something. And it's got to work. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, sure. And so for the two or three months intervening between that July 18th and Halloween, I uh, started working on building uh, something and I, I immediately said to myself, I'm not going to just build a model, i got to see what I can do. And I ended up building a seven and a half foot high um, fully mobile and kind of mechanical um, walking suit that I could wear. Hi, I'm Van Ling. This is my power loader. I built it as a challenge from a friend of mine and also as a Halloween costume. Watch as we put this thing together. It was really a labor of love and we had no blueprints, had nothing to work from other than photos in Starlog and uh, trying to put this thing together. Okay, what we have here are the cables going to switches, all right, which have a set of springs on each side and a plug connection. Throughout the period leading up to Halloween, when, when I finally showed it to him, uh, a couple of friends of mine uh, who were working with me on it were constantly saying, hey, you got to go and show this to James Cameron. And I'm like, right, yeah, that's going to happen. These are, in fact, hydraulic cables. And they finally goaded me into calling up their offices again. Just say, hi, you remember me? I'm the guy who's calling every month about PA positions. Well, I got something I want to show you guys. And they're very guardedly, what? I said, a power loader. What, one you wear? Well, it's Halloween, isn't it? Dead silence for like 10 seconds alone. We'll leave you a pass. And so <laughs> I had to rent a pickup truck to move this thing and drive it from my parents' house, where I was doing this in, his, in their garage uh, in the South Bay, all the way up to uh, 20th Century Fox Studios in, uh, in Century City. And I got there about an hour later than I, uh, than I, was, I was supposed to get there because of trying to move this thing and because I had to disassemble it and, and everything else. And 
I pull onto the lot. Uh, Jim had been there earlier, but he had to go off to a meeting, so he wasn't there. But I pulled up to the Pacific Western Productions building in this pickup truck with my friends Ken Mann and, and uh, Larry Herbst. And we're sitting here trying to put this thing together um, in front of the office in the parking lot. See, this is the part that we can do real slow and take our time on, because once Van gets into the suit, we have about 15 minutes to half an hour to get, finish everything, get him on display, and get him on. And I could see the people from Pacific Western staring out the windows at, at me and, and watching what happens. And we put this thing on, and I've got it in the claws rotate and, and everything, and Gail Ann Hurd comes out and says, this is the best walking resume I've ever seen. And we talked for a while, and they obviously weren't looking for anybody at the time to, to do anything, but um, as I was leaving, she said, hang on a second. She went back into the office, came back out with Sigourney's jumpsuit and Reeboks, high top Reeboks from the movie and said, you might as well make this costume complete tonight. Just bring it back with all the same stains and things that are on it. So uh, I ended up getting the costume to go along with the power loader uh, to borrow. Are you sure you can read the, the Reebok? And it was after that actually that I then went to the party and won the bet. But uh, the, uh, the kicker for that really was that at the party, I was trying to figure out how, I was, how in the world I was going to pay for all this because renting the truck and all these things wasn't really something I had planned for. I was a you know, poor film student, you know, film school graduate living at my parents' house. And at the party, I heard on the radio that there was a costume contest at a dance club in Glendale. And so you know, I looked at, at my friends and... and we said, okay, let's go for it. So we hauled the, <laughs> we put the power loader back in the pickup truck, hauled it to this dance club in Glendale that was, you know, people lined up outside the usual kind. It was in a mall, so it wasn't like, a, you know, right on the street. So we were on the far end of the parking lot because we didn't want to kind of give anything away. And we're trying to put this thing together, and pieces go flying off all the time when we're driving in the truck because it's only made out of foam core and wood and, and styrofoam and, and, you know, little bits of gizmos that I bought at National Lumber at the time. So we're frantically trying to glue the thing back together and we're using hot glue guns which is one of the standard things but there's no plugs out in the middle of the in the middle of the parking lot and so um, Larry's brother Ron Herbst who is an effects practitioner himself these days would take the uh, hot glue gun go into the club, go into the bathroom of the club, plug it in, wait five to ten minutes for it to heat up, then unplug it and run as fast as he could back out to the far end of the parking lot so that we could glue the stuff together. And um, fortunately, we, uh, we won first prize at the, uh, we'll at the costume contest, and, yeah. and the first prize was $500. So it just almost came around to paying for the whole contraption and the, and the rental of the truck. Oh, yeah, babe, woo! The coda to that story is that two weeks later, I get a phone call on uh, my parents' answering machine from James Cameron saying that Gail had told him that, that I had built a power loader, quote-unquote, worthy of note, and that he wanted to come down and see it. And so he eventually, you know, drove down to my parents' house, and that's where we first met. And we kind of hit it off, and two weeks after that, he, uh, he called and asked me if I wanted to be his, uh, his researcher on the abyss, which he was just starting to, uh, to look into uh, writing a treatment for. And the rest, they say, is history.